All right. So it's still super early. I think it's like maybe a little after six o'clock. How you doing, Paul? Hey. I'll give you a sticker when I come back around. It's uh, Adventures ASMR. So thank you, Paul. All right. You know, a lot of stuff is still either half closed. They had the, uh, the holiday, Holy Week. So everything's not totally open yet. Hey, what's up? What country are you in right now? You uh you back in Thailand yet or not yet? I wish you could do the wide zoom while you're uh, walking around live. Oh man, that's awesome. I still gotta check it out over there. I haven't had the chance to go yet, but I, I definitely should, especially uh, just see the comparison between here and there, do some vlogs on it. So, sweet spot. They hired a lot of new people there. Yeah, let's do a lap around the back this time. Just repaved a lot of these roads. Even Champagne Bar up there is closed right now. Oh, you, you did get over here eventually? I didn't know. I thought you only went to Thailand. I wasn't sure. Hello, Paul. How you doing?
Yeah, it's pretty quiet for a uh, Saturday night, even though it's early. Oh, man. Got a uh, H and J sports bar over here. This place is really good. H and J's. Ah, oh, nice. All right. So it's been a while. So awesome place to uh, shoot some pool, have a few drinks. But yeah, super, super quiet right now. Coming up on uh, Kalayan Ave. We're pretty much right across from uh, Secret Door. Cross over, do a full loop, go back down Burgos. Always traffic though. Hello. ramen spot right here. White banana. Yeah, I feel like a lot of like backpackers go here. I always see like anybody who checks in here usually looks just like that. Not saying it's a bad thing, it's just interesting. Just an observation. Hello, Bo. Come back at uh, what, 10 o'clock open? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Bo. So yeah, 10 o'clock this place opens. But then they'll be open until 12 noon the next day. So they're like, they're the super late spot. There's only like, man, maybe two spots that I can think of that do that. Glad to see Lux is open actually. So Lux bar right up there. Kinda wanna go get a drink. Shoot a game of pool. Yeah, right before this, I was sitting down at Altar Bush watching the uh, nine ball tournament with uh, Efren Reyes. So it's like watching watching him play. Now I want to go play. I suck, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, everything else still closed. So Blue Parrot still closed. Little Finger still closed. Oh, looks like a Colto is open. 
We'll make it down this way and then take the loop. Yeah, huge celebration for Holy Week here. Uh, they built a lot of different little uh, ceremonial, uh, not statues, I don't know what to really call them. Little areas with a bunch of stuff that's really nice. What oh, we got? Sir James. Hey. How you doing again? Not bad, doing a live walking around. I'll see you again in a little bit. You gonna be at any of the bars later? Shooters? All right, hell yeah. Hell yeah, I'll see you later, bro. Have a good night. Whoop, don't wanna get hit. All right, we got Octopus. So I, I met him maybe like the first week I checked in to do, what was it, Red Planet. And uh, yeah, he hangs out, shoots some pool. Great guy. If I remember, I think he, I mean, he's from the US. I think he's from like Louisiana. But you definitely meet some great people that. Uh... Hello, sir. one of those little sorry sorry's they got them everywhere and here we go this is shooters so they have and I've said it a bunch of times they have some of the best food they got a patio in the back and the whole bar is in there uh, two pool tables and yeah I don't know the chef is like half wizard whatever he makes comes out No, thank you, bro. They just opened this too, Bodega 3.0. I think that means like, not the third one here, but the third one they have. So I think they have a number one and two in different locations. But this is like a regular club, not a lady bar. Party, party, dance, dance. And here we go, Red Planet. Yeah, if you come out here and you're lost looking at, because there's so many hotels and you're like, well, where's the good ones and which one's clean and which one's a great price, I recommend Red Planet. It's, you know, depending on the time of year, day of the week, it's between 20 to 30 US dollars a night. And you have shooters literally right next door, open 24 hours. So, I mean, if you can't sleep, you're hungry, want to shoot a game of pool or just bullshit around with some other people, uh, perfect place to go and as you can see I mean it's a it's a safe little area you're not whoop yeah I say that as I'm about to get hit by a car <laughs> um, you know so uh, I think the main hub I'm gonna have a place in Manila but honestly for as little as like maybe sorry about that as little as like two to three hundred extra dollars hey how you doing not bad. How you been? No see. Awesome. Oh man, yeah, doing a uh, doing a live right now. So, <laughs> thank you, folks. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, I mean it's crazy. I, I checked in here about a year ago, and the he's one of the doormen at um, right in there at uh, Red Planet, and still remembers me. There's the front desk. Yeah, I mean, Red Planet, everything you need, nothing you don't. But hey, as, as far as that question goes, uh, trying to get another spot out in the Providence. Um, where, I'm not sure, maybe like Angeles. If not Angeles, maybe somewhere in Subic. But uh, you can get, I want to say a small spot for like 
200, 300 US dollars a month. Uh, so super affordable. And uh, electric is not much, but slightly cheaper than being in Manila. What was that? I missed that. Yeah, 24, exactly. It's like, uh, you know, it's, it's a great price. And I mean, the rooms, you know, if you had to say something negative, they're small, but I mean, that's kind of, you know, most things in Asia and most things in the city, it's really hard to find. You're not gonna get a gigantic room. And the other thing, you don't really spend too much time in the room all day, you know, kind of always out and about, use it just for sleeping. Um, so everything you need, nothing you don't, like, you know, I wish they had a, like a swimming pool. Cause it gets, I mean, it's, it's prime summer season here right now and it gets hot. It's with humidity, it's touching like 98, 100 degrees uh, every day. So I wish they had a pool. Um, and I, I actually don't know of a pool in the area where you could just kind of like go and hop in and be like, hey, I'm not, you know, I'm not staying here, but do you guys have a, uh, you know, I pay a few hundred pesos, buy some drinks or something like that, and I could just go swimming. You know, they have that set up all over the place in Angeles. So in Angeles, you could stay, it's even cheaper. You could stay at a hotel for, the lowest I got was $9 a night. And after taxes, here, we'll go this way and hit uh, Makati Ave and loop around. But $9 after taxes, the hotel was $12 a night. And that's, uh, it's a chain. It's called, it's not Red Planet, it's Red Doors. Um, but $12 a night, and it's right next to one of the most expensive hotels in, uh, in all of An Angeles City, ABC Hotel. Ah, uh, damn. Small world, oop. Got a little, felt him come lick my leg. Hello, how you doing? They got the show my, yeah. Let's take a look over here, actually. I haven't actually. Whoop. Yeah, if you're ever in the area, uh, I missed who said that, but if you're ever in the area, just, uh, if you have Instagram, send a message on Instagram. Uh, meet up for a beer, shoot a game of pool, something like that. But yeah, back to Angeles. You can get a hotel room after taxes for less than $15 a night. And if you want to go to the most expensive, these are all great knockoff shoes. I mean, you can hardly tell a difference. Great quality. And maybe like less than $20 US dollars for a brand new pair. Uh, and yeah, ABC, they have a, a rooftop pool with some of the best food around party going all day long so you can you know find some girls bring them to the rooftop party you don't have to stay at that hotel everyone's invited they just ask if you could spend a minimum of 500 pesos and uh, I mean you're gonna do that anyway uh, they got all the yeah a little bit I mean <laughs> I, I like I'm looking at the shoes and then I saw her bend over and I'm like oh man I don't know if I got that on camera or not I was looking over the top of the phone but I mean she's wearing that I'm sure she knows what's going on she probably likes doing that I don't know hey how you doing damn it. <laughs> uh, I think it's that that one right right there the one the the black bent over <laughs> you perfect <laughs> hello to the thank you paul uh and yeah if you go down that way that's where century mall is so it's walkable so if you're staying in burgos area it's not a big mall it's small but it has everything you need nothing you don't i mean it still even has a movie theater it's not like too tiny hello Hello. Hey, buddy. Show my, show my. Yeah, they're good. If 
if you don't know, shomai is like a, uh, a dumpling. Doesn't have to be pork inside. Oh, it only shows one mile? All right, I actually, I never seen a movie there. I just knew they had it. I always walk by and you can smell the popcorn. Hello, thank you, Poe. Oh, damn, all right. Uh, when I come back around, actually, that looks good. Yeah. Thank you, Poe. How, how much? How much is it? How much? I'm so sorry, I can't hear. 50. All right, actually, I might do that while I'm walking. Oh, all right. All right, let's see. Hold on. Here, can you hold that for me? Hold? You don't got to press any buttons. Can you just hold it? Yeah. Just hold it. Like, no, no, no. So I can get the, I got to get the money out of my wallet. Can you? Yeah. Like this. Like, just. Oh. Thank you, Bo. Sure. Bless. Uh, I, I got to learn to dial out. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll figure it out. Um, all right. Just the uh, spicy garlic. Spicy garlic. Awesome. I'll put that under. Oh. I just needed to do it so it didn't, uh, yeah, look down. Awesome, thank you so much. Yes, please. Uh, I'm sorry, this one. Okay, well, you get what you get. See, that's what I get for not knowing Tagalog, so. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, you you keep, keep tip, thank you. Thanks for letting me video, I appreciate it. Oh damn, those are actually really hot in the hand. Have a good night. Let's see. All right. uh, I don't know the difference between this and the other ones, but I mean, they all look good. I'm sure they're all good. Um, they're actually like almost too hot to hold right now. Either that or I got some bitch ass hands. Up, up, up. Am I going to make it? All right. Good lunch. Yeah, they do smell good. This is the first time I actually got them. Well, reconnect. Um, yeah, as far as saying I have a twin here, there's someone else who actually came up to me. I, I just tried the corn. I didn't post it. I tried it yesterday. Uh, the corn with like the, ch the cheese powder and the butter. Delicious. But yeah, I actually, I had another guy come up to me and he's like, hey, I thought you were my buddy that I go drinking with. I haven't met the guy yet, but no, I've heard that from other people. Hello. All right. Let's hit the top of Burgos and walk back down it. I'm not sure if that's the same one that gave us the mooning or not. Or a different girl in a black dress. <laughs> I mean... I gotta admit, I'm whatever I wear, I'm guilty of wearing it multiple times as well. Um, I mean, stuff, it's like it doesn't get dirty. It definitely gets sweaty. Just let it hang out and dry. And then we go out to the bar, no, hopefully no one's smelling you anyway. Let's see. That's funny. Yeah, I guess there's uh, only so many avatars and everybody kind of looks like somebody else. Everybody's got a doppelganger somewhere. There's there's a few girls that are on Virgos that I thought looked identical. I, I said something to one of them 
and she knew right away what I was talking about. And I was like, is that your sister? And she's like, no, we're not related. But she's like, we get told that all the time. It's one of the, one of the girls that hangs out outside of uh, 7-Eleven. But one, one of them seems to be a lady of the night and the other one seems to have like a nine to five. And I saw the girl that had a nine to five and I'm like, hold on one second. Didn't I just see you outside of 7-Eleven? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's crazy. A lot. Some of the lady boys are scary, convincing. Like some of them, you could definitely tell. Some of them, it's like, it's hard to tell. And then there is that small percent that it's like, I, you know, you almost fooled me. You know, as far as like a straight. Filipino Filipino restaurant I feel a lot of these they're all like uh, like for example Altar Bush is like a, a Middle Eastern but they will have Filipino food on the menu so it's like a lot of them they'll all cook something Filipino or they'll all make the adobo dishes yeah yeah well some of them I don't know some of them definitely they overdo it but I feel they overdo it on purpose because some of them you're like, listen, buddy, I've, yeah, I'll give you a million pesos if you find me a woman that looks something similar to what you're dressed up as right now. And I don't mean that in an offensive way. It's just, it's just some, some of them straight up. I mean, it, it looks, regardless of what's going on, it looks scary from a mile away. Like, uh, like what do you call it? Like those uh, dra like drag shows, scary. But, I, you know, I think that's the point of what they're doing. Um, some of them try to really, like, blend, hide, and deceive. But then some of them, it's just, like, they're really kind of going over the top. But, no, as far as Filipino food, I mean, shit, I've... I really would go to Shooters. Shooters has some of the best food in the area. Like, whoever they hired as a chef, I hope they're paying him everything he deserves because... When, whatever you order it's like it's not only is the presentation on point you you know you eat with your eyes first so when they put it down in front of you the way it's presented on the plate is spot on and then as soon as you taste it like he really goes the extra mile just to put some extra here we go this is what I'm talking about the quick quick yeah this is the quick quick so the uh, quail eggs and then they got all the sauces thank you Poe yeah if, if you wind up doing dinner there um, I would, you know, I don't know what you like. Everything on the menu is good, but I would highly suggest it's the, uh, I'm pretty sure it's called the chicken tikka kebabs. And it's basically like, uh, just chicken kebabs, but however they marinate the chicken, it's not like anything normal. Um, like I've had a lot of chicken kebabs and it's like, all right, everyone's pretty much the same, but, um, you eat those and even the rice on the side. You know, it's supposed to be like a uh, more of a Middle Eastern style dish. And if, if they're giving you rice on the side, he even uh, flavors that. You won't get regular rice. It'll be like a, I forget what grain they're using, but it's a different, like like the Batsmani rice. I might be saying that wrong, but you, I think you probably get an idea of what I'm saying. I love Jollibee. Um, probably have it at least three times a week. But they'll take, uh, he even puts like the, um, I'm not sure if it's like cardamom or anise or whatever he's putting inside the, uh, the rice just for those extra flavors. But yeah, it's, and it's a big plate. I mean, one, one plate of the chicken tikka kebabs. I mean, you can hardly finish it. It's like three monster kebabs on the plate. The peanuts are good. They're not really spicy. Well, they're good. This is where they got. Let's take a look real quick. 
clip out. So if you need to scoop up an extra bag or an extra, you got the wallet still, right? Yeah, I got the, take a look, the wallets. That one's actually, I like that one. What's the price on the wallets? Wallets? This one? This one. Ah, this one. What's that, something like that go for? That is a wallet, right? Yeah. Uh, no, no, ATM wallet. Oh, okay, so it's for the cards and stuff. All right, yeah, it looked a little different. All right. And this one's a regular wallet? Yeah, regular. How, what does that go for? $700. 700 great price. Thank you so much. Yeah, it even comes and has the box and everything like that. Hell yeah. Thank you so much, Paul. Appreciate it. Um, and yeah, no, I love Jolly Bee. I like those, uh, the mango pies that they do. How you doing? It's sad. I'm not sure what's going on with her. Some night she's completely normal. She'll come up, she'll say hi, and you can have a small conversation. And some night she's in the middle of the road doing that. Cool. How you doing? I'm doing good. Is it okay to say hello? Uh, sure. Alright. Say hi. Where's that at? Like to go. 1997. Not right now doing a video, but right. so definitely. And your name's Crystal? Yeah. And we all have a place for everything. Awesome. Thank you so much. Boom. I see you later. So Crystal at Makati Palace. Um, and yeah, hey, thanks for the thanks for the comment. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I enjoy doing these videos. I mean, if you can, you know, click the like button. It really helps the algorithm. Um, been around doing this a little over nine months now, but uh, I'm not really good at any of the SEO, the search engine optimization, or how to really title everything and get it out there. Um, so not as many subscribers as I'd like I'd love it to get to the point where you know, hopefully one day it becomes not a crazy job but maybe a small job that's sustainable you know small dreams nothing crazy thank you appreciate it um, and hey talking about those wallets so if you didn't bring an extra wallet out here, and I think I said that in one of the other videos, um, it's a great idea to get a second wallet and a second cell phone. Um, leave your real wallet in the room, leave your real cell phone in the room. And you can get a cheap cell phone here with uh, what load from Globe. And load is what they call their cell phone service. So you go to like a 7-Eleven you get load on the phone for a li as little as a hundred pesos a week. So what, $2 a week, eight, what, eight to $10 a month. Uh, I mean, that's ridiculous. I can't get anything like that in the U S you know, most cell phone plans, they always get you for about a hundred bucks a month. Once you got, you know, all the data and the texting and the, the calling, um, but get a spare. And that wallet, by the way, was, he said, I think 750 pesos. So I don't know. What is that? Like, $14 um, but grab grab that take that out with you and you know heaven forbid you you know hopefully you don't get robbed but if you do get robbed you got something that you can give up right away and not have any kind of emotional attachment or connection to you know it's like if you have something that's like oh shit shit I got my actual cell phone with all my banking and my uh, you know some people have they do trading or stocks or whatever it is that you're doing um, use the other phone only for you know texting some key numbers and yeah you can hand that over right away and what you get a phone for I mean you can get a great phone here for less than a hundred dollars um, maybe even less than 50 bucks Get a, 
a really good wallet for less than $20. And in the event that you do get robbed, just hand it over. You know, have your passport, have your IDs in your main wallet. Excuse me, I burped. In your main wallet. And, uh, yeah, at that point, no harm, no foul. You know, your, your life's way more important. And you got to think, their, their main goal, they're not there to try to hurt you or kill you. But if you try to fight them, you don't know what's going through that person's mind. And uh, you got to think, someone in that position, they're not doing it because they want to. They're doing it out of sheer desperation. So they might be in a position to either feed themselves, feed their family, or if you, you know, you think a little bit further down the line, maybe they got themselves in trouble with somebody and somebody's after them for money. So they're like, listen, buddy, I either take your life or someone's taking mine later tonight. You know, that's a little bit extreme, but it's not impossible. You know, I'm not like, I don't. When I, when I got my phone swiped, I didn't have the time to interview them and ask them why they took my phone. Uh, but yeah, it's probably, and them, it's, yeah, it's probably, you know, easy money. That's probably the, uh, what was going on there. You know, the SIM card thing, I'm, I'm not good at, and it does have to be taken. They, basically, they'll, they'll either walk you through it uh, and give you a SIM card. I had my girlfriend do it for me, so she took care of the whole thing. Hey, how you doing? So she took care of it for me. I was really lucky. Um, but I'll say I'm not like I'm not the best with technology. That's why it's like YouTube was really. really I mean, anybody who knows me growing up, like I don't know, it's not something that I thought I'd ever be doing. I'm not really a computer guy. Even I know it's different than a SIM card, but anything like that any kind of cameras technology you know is never is never really my thing so yeah the sim card i'm sorry i can't i don't know the answer there um it wasn't easy for me i could say that but if you just talk to them they'll figure it out and they're like they're super helpful they know what's going on let me see two different yeah, no, having two different bank accounts. Um, you know, I mean, two different bank accounts is a great idea coming out here anyway, just in case, like, even if you don't get robbed, um, just say, for example, you, you swipe your card at one, like, you tell your bank, hey, listen, I'm going to the Philippines. Don't freeze my account. And they're like, okay, I got you, buddy. I know you're, you're going to be traveling. Don't freeze your account. Then you, you swipe your card at one, you know, everything works. You swipe your card at one spot, and for some reason, the bank goes up. Oh, we detect fraud, and your uh, your card gets cut off. You know, maybe they could turn it back on, but maybe you're stuck in a situation where they're like, "Oh no, no, we like we did it to protect you, buddy." But that card's like really cut off, so like you you have to come home and get a new card mailed to you. Um, and then, you know, worst case scenario, something like that happens, uh, you know, how do you get access to funds? You know, some people have friends and family back home that can wire them some money somehow. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're in a position where like, you know, I've definitely met people out here that I, I talk to and they're like, you know, they might be in their golden years. And they're like, hey, you know, I never got married. I never had kids. Um, I'm sure they got some friends back home. But, they're, you know, some people, if you don't have anybody to help and you get in one of those situations, you know, it's, it's going to be tough. So definitely having multiple bank accounts uh, is a must. Here, let's cut up. Cut up this way. Even if it doesn't have a lot in the other account, even if you don't use it and you're like, okay, I use my primary and I have this other one just in case you know there's an emergency uh, that's that's awesome uh getting something shipped internationally uh my my 
my bank would not do that. I have a, what, USAA military bank. I guess it's not a bank. I guess it's a, how would you call that, credit union. I use the, I just say bank. I know to a bank or someone who's like technical, they're like, oh, well, they're two different things. To me, it's the same thing. You put your money in there and they're supposed to, <laughs> supposed to safely hold it for you until you need to use it. Um, but no, when I had problems and my phone got stolen and they tried hacking onto my accounts, uh, everything did get frozen. And man, it was, it was a bitch. It's, it was terrible. But yeah, they wouldn't, they, not that they didn't want to help me. It's like, there's a, there's a part where I'm like, I'm really glad because if someone was trying to commit fraud, it's good that it's not easy. But they made it so difficult where I, I couldn't even send them an ID. Um, basically I had to go back stateside. All right, well, we're going to do one more lap. We'll call it a night. I'm going to get a drink and maybe some more food. Um, thanks everybody for watching. I super appreciate it. Hopefully the internet's working well enough to where it's loading properly. And yeah, this seems like the, the new spot to go. Kind of a little hidden honey hole. You know what? I definitely should. We'll head over there actually. Let's take a look. We'll go. I missed that last message. Let me see. Yeah, um, that's the other thing. You know, if you lose something, even if it's not for the money, it could be sentimental value. And that's like a, you know, I, I man, yeah, I didn't even think of that. I, I lost so many photos off that. The only, the only good thing is I, I post almost everything on, uh, what do you call it, on Instagram, and it gets archived. So for me, it was... You know, it's like, hey, I lost everything. Some stuff I couldn't get back, but. Yeah, definitely. Or, you know, like I was saying, if you have um, Instagram, just hit me up and <laughs> there, you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, but yeah, if you have Instagram, send a DM. You know, I don't, I don't check the Facebook Messenger too much. Um, so if you send a message on there and I don't get back to you, I'm, I'm not ignoring you, not trying to be rude. Hey, how you doing? Um, I do, I do this channel with a buddy actually, and he had to go back to the States. So it's like, that's why you haven't heard from him in a while, but he helps with the editing and a lot of the stuff behind the scenes, but he'll be out here, I think by the end of next month. Um, yeah, be here by the end of next month. Then you'll get to meet him. All right, let's go check out this fried chicken spot. Yeah, I've been saying it for so long. I'll get something, something small. Let's give it a try. Once again, this is not Cheers anymore. It's called Garrison's now. Hello. Garrison's bar. It's pretty packed tonight. How you doing? All right, I'm gonna finally try some chicken. Let me see. You know, filling station. It's good. Um, I don't, I don't think they have, I think there's other places here that have way better food. Uh, it's gimmicky, it's a lot of fun seeing like the lights and the action and all the memorabilia and the collectibles. And I would definitely do it at least once. All right. Uh, can I get a, you, you have a uh, tonic water? Yeah, we have. I'll do uh, one of those. We have all right, yeah, yeah. Let's see. This is 
Korean fried chicken. Oh, I don't want that to blow away. Some, some are open, some are not. Um, with Easter going on. So it was like, it's more open tonight though. The original and the boneless. I just go original. You know, all sorts of sides. Happy hour. And I think the other side is all the drinks. Yeah, I'll order some chicken and it's fun just to like sit here and check the street out. Yeah, it's like it's it's not bad food. It just like I said, even going to a place like uh, Shooters, like they put I don't know extra time, effort, love, better ingredients. I don't know what it is. I feel filling station cuts a little bit of corners when they're making stuff. Um, can I get the, I'm gonna go with the, gar, the garlic, uh, three piece. Awesome, thank you. I love these things, by the way. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's as much as a tourist trap as, I'm not sure what country you're from, but if you in the US or you're familiar with a, uh, Johnny Rockets, um, so it's like one of those, you know, the 50s themes diners where a lot of times like maybe every hour on the hour, uh, the whole place will play a song and like the whole staff will get up and like do a 30 second to a minute dance. It's a good spot if you take it to somebody, you know, birthday, they got good cakes there. I got the, I don't know if the cop is buying a wallet. Yeah, I mean the, uh, and thank you for that, by the way. No, the, uh, yeah, I didn't realize, you know, when you're, you're going bar hopping, you're going around, um, you don't always ask the prices. I kind of just, like, I'll go to a lot of the places, uh, don't get, like, bar fines and stuff. I'll just sit and hang out and get, you know, a bunch of beers or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this... Whoop. You know what, that's, I want to say that's probably an accurate statement. Um, that's probably really exactly what's probably going on. Oh, hey, hey, how you doing? How you doing? Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. So that's, it's not a bad price for those, uh, those fakes right there. But if you, I mean, it depends on how long you're here and how much you want to travel. But if you go to the uh, Divisoria Mall, I think it's D-I-V-I-S-O-R-I-A. Um, over in Tondo, essentially that's where they get most of this stuff from. So they'll go there, they'll buy a lot of it for super cheap. And then they'll come out here and, you know, have set up a little shop out of that. Uh, that guy, he's, I mean, he's parked there permanently. I've never seen that car move. Yeah, let's take a, take a look over here. So this place used to be the Argos. You know, I was just, I was talking to a, a buddy of mine about that and yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, super great at, at business, but like in my mind, it seems like if they lowered the prices, you know, there'd be a lot more customers. The prices are so high. Yeah, exactly. So some of them like, you know, even if they get, Bar, you know bar find once a month it's like a big deal but the the prices are so high 
where literally, um, you know, maybe maybe just one bar fine a month is literally, you know, half of uh, the average salary here. It's like, you know, if you Google it, I think the average Filipino makes somewhere around 5,000 US dollars a year. So that's roughly around, you know, a little over $400 a month. And if some of these places are asking upwards of 10,000 for a tip, you know, that's literally, 50, that covers 50% of your entire month's salary in one shot. Um, but yeah, if they, if they drop the price, Yeah, if you're, I mean, if you're a first timer, you have no idea. Um, or you just, you have no, you have no clue and you commit to it. And then like after you commit to it, you're like, oh no. You're like, I didn't, how you doing? Um, yeah, basically you're like, shit, now I'm, uh, you know, I committed to, Several, you know, ten thousand pesos, twenty thousand pesos. Then you pretty much get you know, gotta pay. I love these things. But even if you come out, just have a beer, get some food, you know, sit and people watch. It's always a good time. Menu out of the way. And yeah, I was surprised. So right over there, Altar Bush, third floor fabric. Um, that place, no bar finds. Basically, if she wants to go hang out with you, that's on her. You know, I mean, the answer to that, I'd say a mix of either a little bit everywhere or go to the, uh, a lot of the nightclubs. So, like, it's funny, the one I've never been to, I always hear coming up, uh, Royal is, I think it's down that way. I've actually never been there, but that's one place. Back the other way, like down that way behind me, uh, H and J Bar, uh, good spot for that. And every now and then, shooters. And definitely, once it's past like after hours, uh, secret door. So, you know, I've talked to people about it before, and basically, if you're if you're trying to find some of the uh hello po. you're trying to find some of the i would say hottest bar girls if like you know we were just talking about a lot of them don't get bar fined now if they don't you know they might have a very low base salary and then they're working off of the tips and the commission for uh let's see oh shit thank you so much i, I appreciate that very kind um, if they're if they're working off the uh, tips and commission, you know, it's almost like think if you're a waiter or a waitress, you have a very low base salary, maybe a few dollars an hour, or, you know, whatever it is for that shift. Uh, but if nobody comes in and nobody tips you, and you have no t you wait no tables, you know, you're going home with not a lot. So a lot of these girls they wind up in that position, and instead of a bar fine or asking whatever they wanted for a tip when they get off work. So if you're walking the streets, say anywhere between three to five o'clock in the morning when a lot of them are getting off a shift, um, you know, it's just like most people, wherever you work, you know, most people when they get out of work, they're not trying to go straight home. They'll get out and be like, hey, you know, I just worked. I want to go get a drink. I want to have some fun. So you could go and you can meet these girls at either, you know, they want to go out dancing. So if you go to the clubs, some of them will go to the pool halls uh, or the different bars. But you'll go hang out there. You can meet them and, you know, I mean, if you hang out for a while, buy some drinks. Not lady drinks because it's like they're off the clock and they don't work there. But, you know, you shoot the shit for a little bit. And uh, who knows, like, maybe someone who's asking anywhere from... 
just you know average just say they're asking 5,000 tip and like close to 5,000 bar fine you might meet them at a bar and be like hey listen let's you know let's hang out let's have food let's have some fun and uh, how's 2,000 pesos sound and a lot of them might say yes you know or like you know somewhere in between but it really is it's you know I've, I've met a lot of people out here there was an army vet who was explaining that to me and he does he comes out here at like five o'clock in the morning and roams the streets and he's like that's when all the hot ones are getting off work if they didn't get bar fined he's like you know you offer them two three thousand pesos instead of ten thousand um you know shit i mean it's it's better than making zero dollars that day and then a, a lot of them also, if you wind up paying like uh, you know the you know full tip, full bar fine or something, a lot of times if you keep hanging out with them or you know build a, some sort of relationship, you know maybe one day it'll either be free. It doesn't mean like a boyfriend girlfriend type of thing, or maybe it's like hey you know hey we hang out and we do stuff and go out to dinner and you know whatever else in between and. Uh, you know, I'll give you one or two thousand pesos each time we hang out because now you're on a, a friend basis. You might see them several times a week. Uh, but the smartest move by far, you know, if you're not looking for a girlfriend, was uh, the smartest move by far was a uh, a Belgian man. And the Belgian guy told me he's like, hey, you know, I come out here, I vacation here like twice a year. And um, he'll basically find a girl, ask her, and he's like, he's very, he said, he got to be straightforward about it. So he's like, hey, very straightforward. I tell the, you know, tell the girl, listen, I'm here for a month. I'm going to be island hopping. I'm looking for a companion and uh, not looking for a girlfriend, but, you know, what do you, you know, one, are you willing to go with me and be like my companion for the month? Uh, if she says yes, and then pretty much, whatever job she has uh he's like i just offer her you know three times that salary so easy example if she made 500 pesos a day which is very common there's a lot of jobs around here you're making 500 uh, 500 pesos a day in salary he's like well i offered three times so i offered 1500 pesos a day for a full month uh you know obviously she doesn't pay for the hotel she doesn't pay for the food she doesn't play pay for the flights uh, any of the travel and you know he's going island hopping around from anywhere from uh, you know Palawan Cebu Boracay, uh, Boracay I don't know if it's Boracay or Boracay but yeah basically bouncing around so he's just like uh, and that's what he does and um, you know he found I mean the guy was in his 60s and he found a you know pretty girl probably around 25 26 years old and she's just like you know what? That sounds like a hell of a deal. I mean, think about it. It's the same thing. If so, whatever you're making in your state, just say you're making, you know, say you're in the U.S. or Australia or U.K. and you're making like, a, you know, two hundred dollars a day. If uh, some super hot woman came up to you, well, I guess you know, but this, some woman came up to you and she's like, "Hey, listen, like, what do you make?" And you're like, two hundred bucks." She's like, "Listen." <laughs> I'm going to triple that. I'll give you $600 a day. Uh, come hang out with me for a month. We're going to go island hopping to the, you know, we're going to go to the, we're fly to the Maldives. We're going to, you know, go to uh, Bora Bora. We're going to, you know, wherever it is. Um, oh, you know, we're going to eat great food. We're going to have a lot of fun. What do you say? I mean, I, I don't know if I would say no to that. You know, it's like if you put me in that position, what would I do? Um, I might say yes to the same thing. It sounds like a good deal. I mean, especially like the, the biggest thing is just being transparent and being honest, I feel. So he really explained his intentions up front. And, uh, you know, maybe it wasn't the first girl that he asked, but, you know, you meet people that you like, you ask a few people, someone's going to take you up on that offer. I say that. Is there anybody else listening that, that would take a deal like that? Or is that just me? I'm curious. You know, if someone's like, what are you making, right? Say you're making $500 a day. I mean, imagine someone being like, hey, I'll give you 1500 bucks. 
Well, I mean, that's another way of doing it. It's another way of doing it, too. Um, and, you know, it's funny because, like, I hear a lot of time, or some people, and it's, it's hit or miss, some people say the dating apps is all scams, and some people say use the dating apps. Me, I don't, I don't think that they're scams. I think you can find scams on there, but in my experiences, they've always been either few and far between, or you like, you could, you smell it and notice it right away. Um, I'm not with a. What's a, I'm not sure what that is actually. What's a head melter? Ended up with a head melter. Could get messy. Awesome. Let's see what this looks like. Awesome. Cold hearted. All right. Um, a nut job. Okay. Okay. You know, and that's the other thing. I mean, they're they're definitely out there. This actually looks really good. I'm gonna let it cool down for a little bit. You can feel the heat coming off it. But I got the the garlic. All right, and yes, yeah, some of them are crazy. Quick story, and I'll have to tell it again when my buddy gets here because it happened to him. It didn't happen to me. Um, when we went to Subic, basically a girl that he met, uh, and that's that's the reason why he's actually not here because. We went to Subic, he met a girl, we had to fly home, we flew home for about a month, and that girl messaged him, and that girl's like, hey buddy, uh, guess what, I'm pregnant. And, you know, he called, he's like my best friend, he calls me up, and he's just like, hey bro, he's like, we gotta, I gotta tell you something, he's like, remember so-and-so, I don't remember her name, but remember so-and-so, I was like, yeah, he's like, I, uh, he's like, she's pregnant, he's like, what do, you know, and he's, he, he, one, abortion's not a thing here, but that's not his style anyway. So it's like, he's the type to uh, take responsibility. So basically it's just like, you know, what, what do I do in this situation? He's like, I need to, one, I need to get her out of Subic. Uh, I wanna put her in, cause we still split an apartment right over by uh, Rockwell. So he's like, I gotta put her in the apartment and take care of her. You know, I don't want her working while she's, pr basically he wanted to pamper her. He's like, I don't want her to have a hard life. I want the baby to come out okay. So it's like his his heart was in the right place, his intentions were in the right place, and I was like, listen, you know, I totally support you. So he's like, hey, you know, we're gonna have to stop this channel. Um, you know, it was fun. We didn't get anywhere, but I got a girl pregnant. And now it's like I gotta go. You know, basically instead of hustling and doing stuff like this, I gotta go actually find a job. So he he immediately scouted and found a job doing like a, it's like computer CNC design and CAD work. So he found a job, got the job, and we, f we flew back here and speed the story up. Essentially, uh, he, he was asking a bunch of questions and she was sending pictures of, uh, you know, hey, a positive pregnancy test. And then she sent a picture of an ultrasound, which was like, I think it was just too soon. And I'm not good with that stuff, but basically it was just way too soon to have any kind of ultrasound. Like, I don't know how early you could tell on those things. But uh, it was pretty much, hey, I'm pregnant, and here's the ultrasound. And he's like, wait a second. He's like, that's a little fast. The picture that she sent had a hospital. It didn't say the name of the hospital, but it had a hospital code on the bottom corner. So he looked it up, and the hospital actually came back to a hospital in Virginia. Now, if you've listened before, I'm from New Jersey. So, one, it wasn't even a hospital in the Philippines. It was a hospital in Virginia. And then he did a reverse image search on the uh, ultrasound and on the pregnancy test. And those pictures came back from anywhere from 2017 to 2019. And there were someone else's photos that, you know, this girl found on Facebook. Um, but speed the story up, basically it was, it was a huge scam. And she was basically, hey, you know, like I'm pregnant, I'm gonna need money for this, I'm gonna need money for that. And, he started get you know he didn't give her too much but he started giving her money and basically went to go have her move into the uh the apartment and i forget after after he did that he called her and confronted her and uh you know she was obviously super embarrassed and kind of like hung up she wouldn't even talk she hung up the phone um but complete complete scams she did the same thing to uh another guy that we met at one of those bars it's funny because 
him and this guy from like, not that you should ever be fighting over a girl over here, but basically him and this uh, guy from uh, Finland, uh, they got into it. The guy from Finland was drunk and totally, and so my friend's from Ukraine. So he starts insulting him and he's like, hey, you know, basically calling him a pussy and being like, shouldn't you be over in Ukraine right now fighting? With fake, yo, right? Yeah, I think you told me that story. That was a great story as well. I'd love to tell that on here one night. Uh, but the, I mean, they're every, and most of them won't do that to you. But she did that to my friend. Uh, the guy, the, the guy from Finland that he was fighting with, she pulled the same thing on him. Uh, so that's how they made up. So like when we went back to that bar and talked to him, instantly they went from, uh, you know, well, how's the saying go, you know, and it, I forget how to say it. You know, an enemy of my, uh, my enemy's enemy is my friend. So basically they, they both had something in common. They went from both wanting to be with this girl to this girl scamming both of them for a fake pregnancy scare to them being buddies. And, uh, you know, we had a whole great drinking night talking about it, laughing about it. And then I, last time I went to Alongapo, that guy's still there. I was talking to him and I was like, you ever hear from, and I, I forgot her name, but basically I was like, you ever hear from so-and-so? And he knew who I was talking about. She recently, she's on the run right now. She, you know, some guy took her out. Now, this is partly his fault. If you leave your safe unlocked and you've got a, a large amount of cash, you should never leave unattended. But basically he left out, it was uh, 200,000 pesos and she swiped it and she ran. And basically, like I said, most Filipinos, they might make four or $5,000 annually, 200,000 pesos, roughly about 4,000 US cash. Um, so in, in one shot, you know, she literally has, you know, that's what 90% of, 80% uh, of a year's salary. So she swiped that, ran. The bars have no idea where she went. You know, maybe she went back to her home province. But hey, if you come out here, always be careful. It happens. You know, if not, uh, but most of the time, no. Most of the time, you're, you're not gonna run. That really is the one percent. Um, I don't personally, I don't have any horror stories like that myself, but I've, I've heard it before. Yeah, exactly, 3,000, it's, it's a lot of money. It's no joke. Yeah, you know, um, it's crazy. It shouldn't be surprising because it's like it. I mean, it could definitely it, and not even here. Like, let's put it like this: if if you're if you're an older gentleman, like I'm 37, I'm at the age where I I know. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Hey, thank you. I I still watch your stuff too. What's the name of your channel again? I'm with Moises. Yeah, Moises TV. So he's on one of the. Uh, do you still work at? Um, not right now. No. All right. Okay. Okay. But uh, hell yeah, still okay. The one. That, that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Dude, you're always biking, working out, going on adventures. It's Mo. How do you spell M O I S E S? Moises TV. And that's on YouTube too. So Moises, M-O-I-S-E-S -E TV. And uh, hell yeah, you're, he's always going on crazy adventures, going up and down like, uh, like rapids uh, and bringing his bicycle. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, thank you, Po. Crazy. Hell yeah, no, it's great. I always see you biking around. Dude, hell yeah. Filming right now. Dude, that one looks fancy, bro. You want it? No fucking shit. That's awesome. Oh, hey. How you doing? Uh, Adventures ASMR. So, thank you. I appreciate it. Definitely. That's badass. I I am uh, I'm not good at ever winning anything. So congratulations. I'm happy for you. 
That's awesome. Adventures with an S, A S M R. Yes, Bo. Thank you so much. Shout out to you. Thank you, Moises. Awesome. Boom. Enjoy. And uh, yeah, send me a message on Instagram. Yeah. Awesome. Definitely. Hell yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, yeah. Super appreciate it. Thank you, Paul. I see you later. No, oh, great guy. I met him at uh, Red Planet, and he does like an adventure channel. He's always going around. Um, he brings that on like the white water canoes and takes it in places where most people wouldn't go. And he does a lot of, uh, I mean, it's some intense mountain biking. Yeah, they're, no, I'm reading what you said. There will always be someone who takes advantage of an opportunity. But yeah, what I was saying is like, um, you know, I'm 37. I think most most people here need a name for the challenge. You know, so it's funny, a new name for the channel. I've been talking to my buddy about that. When we named it, it was originally supposed to be an ASMR channel, just a walking channel. And we did that. If you go all the way back to the beginning videos, that's what it was. We stayed quiet. But if you see, there's just people that it's so friendly in the Philippines. You can't walk around with a camera and have people not say anything. So you had people just, everybody wanted to talk. Everybody wanted to say something. And I, you know, I loved it. So it literally turned into a... You know, just walking around and talking. Um, but yeah, that, so that's why it that's why it started as uh, that name, and it's just evolved into I guess what it is now at the moment, whatever it is. There you go. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Got to get the uh, the go <laughs> strap the GoPro to the head uh, and dive in deep. <laughs> but um, no, I was just saying like. Uh, most people, you know, they're probably over over 40. I'm 37. Um, at that age, if you're hanging out with somebody, you really know who you're hanging out with. But uh, even in the U.S. at a younger age, you meet people, you have people over, you have a gathering. It doesn't have to be in a, a country like this. There's always going to be somebody. If you leave out $3,500 on the table, um, I mean, it, it's like it's... No, it's not a crazy amount of money to change people, but there might be that one person who's a good person and they just, you could, sometimes I feel you could take a good person and you can set them up with a bad opportunity and they might like, they might make a bad choice or a bad decision uh, based in that moment. Something that they, you know, if you ask them, they say, oh, I would never do that. And they might mean it. And then all of a sudden you... You know, I mean, shit, that's what goes back to having uh, integrity. You know, I remember when I went through a uh, boot camp in the Marine Corps, that was what the senior drill instructor always tell you. He's like, always be a man of integrity. And the, the best way he explained that, and I know everybody already knows the definition, but just saying, you know, basically um, integrity is to do the right thing even when no one is watching and that's what he said so he's just like don't ever let me catch because like he's like we're always watching somebody's always looking at what you're doing so never be put in a situation where you think no one's watching you're like hey i'm gonna do this right now because no one's looking at me um a man of integrity will always do the right thing even when no one's looking at him and that's uh yeah amen to that it really is so like i said it doesn't have to be here um, I mean, shit, I, like when I was in my mid twenties, I had people that I met at the gym and we'd hang out before and after the gym, you know, cooking steaks and whatever. And, uh, if you had some money laying out, like I've, I've had stuff go missing. I never figured out who did it. Um, but those things, I mean, they happen. So it's like, you could take good, pe good people, put them in a situation where they'll just see something and then just goes in their pocket. It is a great place to hang out and chill. Um, and awesome coming here in June. Not too much longer. So what is it? It's almost, well, it's April. April, May. So three more months. 
that's a cool little outfit right there. Yeah, no, it's like I said, I love people watching here. It's right here next to us, Cheers Bar, that's now Garrison's. It's just been so full, so it's hard to get a seat there. I'm glad that they used to have a, uh, if anybody remembers, Argos had a glass window here. And they had tables in the front, but I really like this setup, so they knocked everything down. I like that it's all open. But good, good spot. But yeah, you know, I'm gonna call it there. I appreciate everybody hanging out. And uh, yeah, if you ever wanna hang, I'm gonna eat the chicken. What is this, some sort of pickled radish? I have no idea. Can we flip it around? I'm sweaty as hell, but hey, thanks for watching. And yeah, sweaty, sweaty. Um, if you didn't already, please uh, click a thumbs up on the like. It really helps the, uh, the algorithm and stuff like that. And you know, if you're ever in the area and you want to hang out, um, I'm super open to it. I like meeting people and just hanging out, shooting the shit, people watching, bar hopping, shooting pool, having some good food, um, chicken prop. You know, it was steaming. It's, I just put my hand over it. It's still got a little bit of heat left, but yeah, yeah, it'll be a little easier. Um, but hey, thanks again. Super appreciate it. And, uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll see you again in the next one. So, and thanks again for the uh, the tip. Uh, much appreciated. So, well, sweet. Peace.